Hello, my name is Jesse Weaver. I'm a forest manager for Mendocino Redwood Company, and today we will be talking about logging administration. Once we have an approved THP, it's time to identify the contractors that will be doing the logging and the contractors that will be doing the road construction and crossing installations. We also need to ensure that we have all the um, required permits for timber harvest operations. Those do include 1600 permits with the Department of Fish and Wildlife, uh, WDR permits with the Regional Water Quality Control Board, uh, and then once again have to have an approved THP. Logging is paid in one of two ways. It is paid by the green ton, which is the gross weight of the logs being delivered to the sawmill, or it can be paid by the thousand board feet, or MBF. Now it is time to meet with the licensed timber operator out in the field. Within that meeting, we will cover some of the special resources where there might be equipment exclusion or limitation zones, and also just cover his responsibilities regarding the harvest operation. Now the licensed timber operator is giving the bucking cards, which have the um, length specifications and the log quality criteria for the logs that he will produce out on the landing. He is also giving a log sort sheet. Given that we do own two sawmills within um, California, some of our logs are shipped up to Scotia and some of them are shipped to Ukiah. Now regarding tractor yarding, we will meet with the LTO before starting operations. We require that all licensed timber operators pre-flag their skid trails. This ensures that the minimum number of skid trails are reopened for operations. As all the logs are skidded to a landing, we want to make sure that the landing drains properly once it's done, once they're done using it, and that all logging slash is either skidded back to the woods on the tractor roads or is piled up in a burn pile on the landing. As for cable operations, we want to make sure that the tail holds, the areas where the cable lines anchor to on the bottom side of the yarding unit, are properly cleared for fire purposes and that the cable corridors or the cable roads are not too close and the widths of those corridors are not too wide. In regards to the road work, we want to ensure that all the crossings are properly installed, whether they be rock armored fords or culverted crossings to the specifications of the timber harvest plan. We also want to ensure that the roads are built to the proper road width. As mentioned before, we're looking for a road that is anywhere between 14 to 16 feet wide and that we don't have any buried or perched fill material within the road prison. Now the job is complete. It's time to winterize the road. That includes water barring the tractor roads, the seasonal haul roads, and making sure that your rocked roads are properly drained. It is also time to contact the agencies and let them know that your operations are complete. After we complete operations, we have up to five years to ensure that the site is adequately stocked given state standards. This often includes planting those units within the first winter or two to give the trees at least three years before doing formal stocking surveys. 